Hello and welcome to part nine of this Tableau Made Easy series. Here we are gonna take a small break from adding to and enhancing our worksheets and visualization. And we're gonna spend the next three videos talking about and playing around with something really powerful in Tableau and that is calculated fields. So the dream scenario would be that when starting work in Tableau, we have everything that we could possibly need in our data source to create all of the logic and all of the visualizations that we need. But as any data scientist or analyst comes to learn, seldom does data meet any sort of dream scenario. And this applies equally when using Tableau. Sometimes we'll realize that we could do with some extra data or extra logic to help us with what we're looking to create. But as I mentioned, the problem is that our additional data or logic indeed does not exist in our original data source. And this is exactly where calculated fields come in. So calculated fields allow us to create new data or new logic or even new variables from the data or the variables we already have in our existing data source. And this will become a lot clearer when we take a look at a few simple examples. And then after these videos, we'll actually create a few calculated fields that will contribute to our worksheets and to our final dashboard. So let's start right at the top. To create a calculated field, we have several options. We can go up to analysis here in our menu bar at the top, and then all the way down to create calculated field as a, another option. We can click the little drop down here at the top of our data tab to the left of our screen. And again, we would click create calculated field like we did when we created our very simple earthquake counter calculated field. Another option is to right click in the empty space at the bottom here and create calculated field. Finally, and if we wanted to save ourselves a tiny amount of time, we can right click on one of the variables that we want to use as part of our calculated field. So let's just pick magnitude, for example, and we can click on there or click the drop down. We can go down to create and then calculated field. And you can see that this final approach would actually put that variable straight into the code box for us to manipulate or apply logic to, which can be quite useful. Anyway, let's close that and let's start actually creating a calculated field from scratch. So to make sure that we don't mess around with the charts that we've created or our map, let's open up a new worksheet. So down at the bottom here, let's click our little new worksheet icon. And here we are all clean and empty and ready to go. Cool, so let's start by just getting something nice and basic for us to use so we can see some of these calculated fields in action. Let's just drag in some data to our new sheet at row level. So let's drag our ID variable here into the rows section. And then let's drag magnitude onto the values section here. So what we essentially have here is a row for each of our earthquakes and we have the magnitude associated with each. So no aggregation by location or anything else, just our raw row level earthquake data. And now we have this, let's create ourselves a nice simple calculated field that will show off some of the logic that we can utilize. As we saw just a moment ago, we have a lot of different ways that we could create a calculated field. I'm just gonna right click in the blank area here and then create calculated field. So let's give this a name. I'm just gonna call this CF. So for calculated field underscore magnitude. And you can of course name this whatever you want, but since we're just messing around here learning about calculated fields, I wanna make sure we can identify any that we make so we can potentially remove them at the end of this tutorial before we carry on with our dashboard. Cool, now for our calculated field itself, let's just try something like magnitude. And you can see if I type a couple of letters in there, it knows what variables we have. So we can just hit tab to autocomplete. Or actually, if I delete that for a second, we can also drag a variable into the box. So if I drag magnitude in here, we would get that same result. Anyway, now we've got that in there, let's keep moving. So let's just specify magnitude and then a space and then greater than and a space and 20. And then let's hit OK. Cool, so now over on the left of screen, we can see our new calculated field up the top. And what tells us that it is indeed a calculated field is the little equal sign next to it. And we can see it there next to our earthquake counter calculated field from earlier as well. Now the T slash F that we see next to our CF magnitude calculated field, that is just showing us that this is a Boolean variable. Our logic is essentially just saying, is magnitude greater than 20? Yes or no, true or false. And to see this in action, if we drag our CF magnitude field onto our sheet here, 
we get this new column, which shows for each row, or more specifically each earthquake in our case, a true or false value for whether magnitude is indeed above 20 or not. So we can see those first four rows there, or those first four earthquakes with magnitudes of 6, 7, 5 and 11, they all have a value of false. And then the next two rows with magnitudes of 36 and 22, they have a value of true. Cool, so that is a super, super simple calculated field that could be useful as a toggle perhaps. We could add that as a filter to help the dashboard viewer only see earthquakes with magnitudes above or below a value of 20. Now, one step better than this would be to use some more explicit conditional logic. So over on the left, if we click the drop down on our CF magnitude variable and then we click edit, let's go into our logic box here and let's change this to if, and you can see I use tab to auto complete that as well, if magnitude is greater than 20, space then, and in quotation marks, let's put what should happen if that is the case. So let's put big, else, in quotation marks again, small. Now, with what we have so far, this has given us something interesting. Down the bottom here, we can see this red font saying the calculation contains errors. And this is a really useful feature that Tableau offers. So if we click onto the error message there, we can see it gives us some information and specifically it is saying expected end to match if. So that just means that for an if statement to work in a calculated field in Tableau, we need to also include an end clause, which we've not done. So let's add that in here. So after small, let's put a space and let's put end. And now we can see that it is saying our calculation is valid. Nice work. And now this is all looking good, let's hit apply. And as soon as we did that, behind the box here on our worksheet, we saw those true false values change to big and small. So it's essentially the same logic, but it allows us some more explicit control. And would also mean that we could add many more groupings or logic if we wanted. For example, instead of just big and small, we could add some more logic for medium earthquakes too. Cool, so lastly, we could of course change this to instead be some sort of numerical calculation. So let's remove all of this and let's put magnitude again. And this time, let's put it to the power of two. So magnitude squared. Again, let's hit apply. And again, behind our box there on our worksheet, we see this in action. Now, one interesting thing with our particular calculated field here is that because our first bit of logic that we used was a Boolean data type, so remember it was just a true or false, Tableau assumed that this should be a dimension, hence why it appeared up the top of our variables list in blue. And that is the correct thing for Tableau to have done. And when we changed it to be a string with our conditional logic, so where we had if magnitude was greater than 20, then big, else small, then it also made sense to be a dimension. But now we're dealing with some numeric logic. So our CF magnitude field is simply our magnitude squared. In my mind, this would be much better suited to a measure. And if we created a calculated field with this particular logic from scratch, Tableau actually would have done that automatically. Since we changed our logic for this calculated field, however, it's kept it as a dimension, but we could always make that change ourselves. So if we click OK, and then over on our CF magnitude variable, if we click the drop down, we can just go to convert to measure and that change will be made. And to actually put this into action, so to get Tableau to use this calculated field as a measure rather than a dimension, if we just drag CF magnitude off our view here and then add it again, it is now actually added as a secondary value column rather than a second dimension as it was before. Like I say, this was only because we initially created a dimension and then changed the logic from there. If we'd created this magnitude squared calculated field from scratch, it would have been classed as a measure by default. But good to know why that was happening. So I thought I'd quickly mention it. Cool, so those are just some really quick and really simple examples of calculated fields that you can create at a row level. It's worth noting that you could also use calculated fields at a row level to do things like create a profit amount. So if you had sales data for a company and let's say that company made, I don't know, surfboards and you had a column for the cost of making a surfboard and another column for the price the surfboard sold for, 
you could create a calculated field for the difference. So sale price minus the cost of creation, or perhaps you could even create the ratio. So one divided by the other. You can also do things like concatenate two columns together. So perhaps you had customer data and you had a variable for first name and a variable for last name. In your calculated field logic box, you could do something like first name plus a space in inverted commas plus last name to create a calculated field that represented the customer's full name. And a good way to think about the possibilities of what we can do in Tableau here with calculated fields at row level is that we can more or less do all of the things that we might do in Excel. So we can extract parts of strings, we can change lowercase to uppercase, we can search for certain parts of text and return only that. We can do things like create, change, and manipulate date variables. The possibilities are really almost endless. And Please do remember that the documentation on Tableau's site and in the Tableau community is really, really good. So simply Googling the task you're trying to do will get you all the information you need. And of course, if you are up for taking on a new calculator task without Googling it, Tableau also offers some help here in the application. So if we go into our CF magnitude calculated field here, and then if I click this arrow over here on the right hand side of our calculated field box, we get this long list of the functionality that can be applied. We can search by name, and there are even categories to search within. And for each, there is an explanation and an example too. So very, very useful. Do not forget that that is there. Cool, so let's leave it there for now. That is a nice introduction to calculated fields at a row level, and hopefully you can see how powerful they can be. But there is so much more that we can do with calculated fields. And this all surrounds an idea called level of detail, and we will discuss this, and we will get our hands dirty with it in the next video.